Uh, gonna need that. So, welcome to Rough Cuts, our podcast about good boys in bad movies. We are now supposed to record our thoughts on this movie for about the next 30 minutes, and all I can hear in my ears is this low-pitched hum. So Yeah, that won't that go should, away. What the hell? That should describe how much this movie uh, has done to me. So, Ilion. Oh. Yeah. Let's talk about Karate Dog. Would you recommend Karate Dog? I loved it. It was my favorite family film of the whole year. I think it came out in what year was it? 2003? 2004. 2004? It was the best movie of 2004, friend. I know too much about Karate Dog now that I can correct you on Karate Dog stuff. Like, <laughs> oh, I know, the, I know the year it came out. I know who starred in it. I know that John Voight was incredibly drunk throughout the entire thing. And so was I, thankfully. That, that's the one saving grace, is that both <laughs> myself and John Voight were incredibly smashed for most of this movie. I think most of the cast was smashed for this movie. They had to have been to keep them on set. Oh, uh, man. All right, Karate I mean, Dog. Well, right? Chevy Chase wasn't on set. Let's clear that up. Oh, they... Che- sorry. Chevy Chase was Skype. As was very clearly labeled on the box... The voice of Chevy Chase was featured, and, you know, I appreciate that they got Chevy Chase's voice. Um, that must have been really hard to get his voice over there for the uh. film. I, I'm, I swear he recorded his lines from his bedroom. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like, like you said a couple times, it was really echoey and, like, yeah. awful. He, he sounded as bad as our podcast does. <laughs> right? Speaking of bad things, let's talk about Karate Dog some more. So... I noticed it starts out with, like, this... Like you said, the set looks like it's from a 90s film. It's yeah. It's almost certainly a reused set. Like, We're... it feels like they, at, like, slapped some paint on it, maybe. And mm. then, like, reused, like, this 90s, like, lab set. And all the technology in this movie is... It's 2004, but it's all dated by about 10 years. Like, it's supposed to be all futuristic, but it's all very, very dated. Oh, it looks terrible. Yeah, and it starts with, like, a really, like, boom, like ter- almost like Terminator-style opening. Like, where it's got, like, the block text and, like, this really heavy kind of theme music. Right. And then it's, like, Mr. Miyagi, literally Mr. Miyagi, Pat Marina, is in this movie. That poor man. Heist. That poor... I feel so bad for Mr. Mis- I feel so bad for him for being in this film. But Don't thankfully... Don't feel too bad because yeah. he was literally in about a minute of it. Well, that's, at, that's so they can put his most. name on the box. Yeah. That's the only reason. I was really disappointed yeah. about that because when it was Karate Dog and it had Pat Marina, I'm like... Okay, what are the odds that we get, like, a wax-on, wax-off joke? Mm -mm. The movie that I was making fun of in my head was way more interesting than the movie we actually got to watch. Like, way more interesting. They didn't need any of that. They didn't use him at all. Like, his fight scene, he has, like, a ten-second fight scene about a minute into the movie, and then he's just dead, and that's the end of it. He does a heist, takes the T-virus out of this 90s Well, okay, let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's let's okay. describe this a little bit better because I think this is an incredibly important scene that lasts two minutes, and this is <laughs> yeah, all we get yeah. of Mr. Miyagi, and we need to treasure that moment because, <laughs> all right, that is one of the better moments of the movie. He was probably drunk in most of the scene, but it's fine. Everybody was. Everybody was. Yeah. So nobody was as drunk as John Voight. Oh though. god. We'll John get into Voight. that. We'll get to John Voight. The, the camera starts. Yeah, like you said, zooming in on some like '90s technology of this Frankenstein computer that looks like it's science equipment because science things are happening. And if find yeah, we it's find like out a big bank that, of computers. Yeah, yeah, we find out that we're in Umbrella Corporation headquarters, and that Mister Miyagi has broken in to steal a Mogwai. But we later find out that Mogwai is actually the ooze from TMNT two, and he also has a dog named Jojo from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. But the Foot Clan comes in and knocks him over. But he's so drunk that he hits his head and dies. So the dog has to get revenge. 
Uh, and that's... I think that's the opening, and that's all we get of Mr. Ryagi. Yeah, that's the opening. That's exactly what happens. He does a T-virus heist, then the dog fights off the rest of the attackers. The dog immediately starts talking. Oh, and wait, then, like, hold on, runs hold on. Events. You forgot. The dog starts talking in the herb store. Yo, no, well, no, I'm gonna get to that. Right? I'm gonna get to that in a second. Okay. I just want to note, though, before that, they get into a big fight scene, and the dog, like, mm-hmm. fights them off, but not before, like, the main bad guy escapes with a bite on his arm. And the, uh, have him, they get away with the ooze, and then he has the Mr. Miyagi death scene. This is about two or three minutes in, and I said, at that time, I wrote down a note with accurate title. Last time we had cop dog, and there was yeah. the, the dog was not a cop at all. Two, two had, minutes the in, the cop didn't do any cop stuff. This one, it's like two minutes in. The dog's doing karate stuff. This is looking great. Later on, you asked me to cross that out. Oh no, you definitely cross that out. Fuck this. I, I actually did cross it out. It took us an hour and ten minutes later to see the next karate fight scene to give you an idea. Uh. It felt like this movie was in fast forward again and then slow down again. I think that's going to be the theme for a lot of these. Where they're like, they just kind of check mark the beginning of the movie, like, okay, let's get our setup done, like, okay, the main character dog, like, the main, like, mentor dies, and then the dog does this, and then the dog's got to be accepted by somebody new, and they just do that whole checklist, and then once they're done that, they're like, wait, oh man, what's our movie about? Right. And they just, just like, and then it becomes filler right. for an hour. And then they're like, okay, ending time. Okay, we know what we're going to do for the ending. Checklist the ending, five minutes, done. And that's the movie. And, uh, yeah, this is all taking in place. Uh, my next note after that, though, was what you were saying, which is Mr. Miyagi's Weed Emporium. Yes. <laughs> which probably sets the tone for the rest of the movie when you think about it. Yeah, yeah it's but... very literally his... It's Chin Li? It's, it's Chin Li, right? Yeah, from Street Fighter 2. Chin Li. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's Chin Li Herb Garden or Herb Emporium or herb, something. Herb it's something. Like, oh. Definitely weed. Listen, it doesn't say weed on it, but all I want to note is that there's a lot of greens in the mm-hmm. woods. <laughs> so Mr. Miyagi's Weed Emporium is where the karate dog gets into the fight with the Foot Clan. After that... The cops show up because Mr. Miyagi's dead, and they have to file a report, and they bring in the uh, forensics team, which has yeah, our main the... character, Adam Sandler, knockoff. Oh, God, yes. Um, bec- I just want to note, it. the cops came because the dog called 911. Oh, yeah, I fucking forgot. <laughs> the dog called 911. I hate that. Yeah, it's real bad. It sucks. So, it sucks. So it all sucks. Adam Sandler has a fancy computer called Caller, which is this In a laptop. S- super yep. magical AI that runs out of his briefcase of, like, three GPSs and a tablet from 2006. With no keyboard and no other inputs at all. <laughs> but it has dial-up internet, and that's the important part. Hi, Peter. So are we on a case? We're oh, okay, okay. Let's fuck. They you called their computer you system caller. Uh, I was just making it, you know, and it friendly. talks. It's the first Talking thing computer. Maybe you'll get lucky. Connect. What's caller? Yes! For criminology yeah, online fuck analysis. Fuck, fuck it has dial-up. So, the cops... Spend about 10 seconds looking around the scene, and then immediately a dog catcher bursts through and goes like, I'm on the job, here I am, I'm the important person, like, shoves all the cops to the side, and goes after the dog that's there, and he, in this kid's movie, they go, what are you doing here? And he goes, TLG, tag him, lock him, gas him. And yeah, it's like, it's what? So fucking weird. I just, it's so, it's so sudden and abrupt and, like, violent and weird. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's talk for a moment. At, at this point in the movie, we've been introduced to Jojo, mm-hmm. which is the, the main character of our film and the protagonist, voiced by Chevy Chase. At, yeah. Poor Chevy Chase. No, Real, no, uh, do you I think, don't feel... Do you think this was a paycheck for Chevy Chase, or do you think, like, he... He actually thought this would be a good movie. He signed up for it. He thought, oh, this is going to be great. Chevy Chase has done nothing but paychecks for, like, 20 years. I mean, this so. was this was pre-Community. I actually like yeah. Community, but... 
Community is like the one thing that he did that's been good in those that time. But like honestly, I mean, it's been like twenty some plus years, twenty or thirty yeah. years since he's had anything that was vaguely watchable. So this is just like another in a long list of horrible Chevy Chase movies. Would you watch a Chevy Chase cat movie? <laughs> I have a question. Uh, You're thinking I, about I it. I don't want to say yes because I know that then <laughs> we're going to be stuck watching it. But then I'm like, is it better than whatever next thing we have lined up? Because <laughs> uh, I don't know. But, okay, we're introduced to Chevy Chase Dog. Chevy Chase Dog beats up the, the dog catcher and then jumps in the back seat of Adam Sandler knockoff's car. And they yeah. go home to Adam Sandler knockoff's vault mansion for some reason. Uh, and the dog introduces yeah. himself to Adam Sandler knockoff by talking like a human because dogs can also learn human language. Mm-hmm. And yeah. comedy ensues, which I use the term comedy extremely loosely right now. <laughs> yes. It's, and he's got a, I just want to go back for just half yeah. a second, because like you said, like his mansion vault thing. That was so, so weird. So he has, yeah, he's this forensic officer, I guess, like a forensic detective, which makes no sense. And who also programmed this super powerful AI that apparently has a crush on him, which we'll get to later. Oh, they're going to bone. Um, yeah, they bone. There's a lot of boning down in this movie. <laughs> but, um, so, he, they he's got, like, this massive mansion. Like, we're talking, it is, it's unbelievable the scale of it. Like, it's like a football field. Like, it's like this... It's got, like, an aerial shot of it, and there's, like, floodlights everywhere, and, like... It's clearly not the place like... where they filmed that part of the scene. 100%. No, that too. Yeah, yeah, And then he's got, like, vault doors on all of his actual doors. Like, bank vaults. Like, massive steel, like, riveted doors. They're, I mean, they're obviously fake. Like, they're really badly fake. Like, they're, they're fake painted and mm. stuff, but... It's still like, why is this the theme of his house? It's so, it's so strange. Everything about this is really, really weird. And we have about two or three different filler car scenes because we get like you said, he has like the oh dogs can't talk, and the dog's like oh mm. I killed my master, I'm here to help you. And there's the comedy of like the dog walking around and like you doing human things. Like yeah, I can't believe teeth. dogs can do human things like fart. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that, so that's a joke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But okay, so that's the joke. Okay, so Adam Sandler knockoff takes JoJo to the police precinct because JoJo is a witness to the crime of Mr. Miyagi getting killed by the Foot Clan because of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle two ooze. I think we're I think we're following the plot line so far. <laughs> so they take the dog to the precinct. The dog obviously doesn't speak to the cops for some reason. So they do yeah, like the he wants speak to, joke. He tries to get the dog. Yeah, he tries to get the dog in an interview room to talk to like every in front of everybody, and the dog doesn't. It does the yeah. "Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey." Like frog thing from the yeah. Like, like it was really sketch, weird like, when like something burst out of his chest and started dancing. But I immediately <laughs> got the spaceballs reference, and I super appreciated it. It was wonderful, yeah. The moment that they... I, I knew that we were in yeah. for a treat the minute that John... A miniature John Voight burst out of his <laughs> chest and started dancing around on the table. Oh, God. And all Can the you imagine? Just, like, laughing about it. Can you imagine? That would be a much better Shit, movie. Shit, we should have wrote that, this movie. I watched that movie. That would have been great. Uh, instead, what we were treated to was this dog... This guy improv at a dog. Um, and Poorly. the dog just kind of sitting there. Bored. I, I used the term improv very loosely. And then... But anyway, the dog and him decide that they're going to catch his master's killer, which I think was his job anyways. It, it was, So yeah. that's weird. Yeah, it basically was done because otherwise there wouldn't have been a movie. Like, if the dog had just talked and all the cops had believed him and been like, wow, it's a talking dog, then the movie's over. Yeah. So they just kind of just sidestepped that by the dog going like, well, I don't really like to. And that that's about it. That's the reasoning for it. It does lead us into the best scene though, where there's almost no setup. Like the setup for it sucks. He's like, "Oh, I need to go to the bathroom." And he's like, "Why?" Because like, "Oh, take a whiz, duh." And then it does have a good like kind of comedy mm. moment 
of this really cute dog leaning against the urinal. And it's not... Most of it is really, really bad, really bad CGI dog. And at least this one was, like... It's an actual dog just, like, leaning on the urinal with the guy next to him peeing, too. And, like, somebody walks in and is kind of like, what the hell? And that was, like, the only legitimate kind well, of funny thing in it. At, at least we know them. that they decided to shake on it when they decided to become, you know, buddies and cop. Like, <laughs> yes. You don't, oh, yeah, they you did don't the like shake that on joke? it. Yes. Well, it's, yeah, it's a double they joke because they did joke. the shake on it for the dog shake, and then they also shook their junk in the urinal afterwards. Yes. Yes, they did. So I, I wanted to note, to I had a note that there's, like, filler car scenes. Because they had, like, a big, long, like, minute and a half scene of... I didn't like, even driving. write that scene down. It was so bad. Well, it, there's a couple of them. Like, I, I started writing yeah. it after they did a few of them. Because, like, they race through the beginning of this movie again. And then immediately they, like, grind to a halt where they go, yeah. like, they do a car scene where he has the dog in the back seat and it has him driving home. And they have, like, a whole song over it. And it's, like, all these shots of the city. And then he gets home and they do, like, the dog comedy thing. And then they have a big scene of him driving to the police precinct with music, another montage, and it's like, oh, wow, they're really stretching the runtime on this, like, really hold, early in. Hold on. This is just coming to me right now. They set up that the dog can drive, and he doesn't even drive in... I'm mad. He doesn't even drive no, at the no, end. The they they did the setup, and then never fucking on, pay off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, then we're introduced to knock off Kill Bill. Yeah, man bun. <laughs> it's John, John Voight... In, like, kimono kind of weird things, like, really bad bathrobes, and with a man bun and a southern accent. Ah, it's a really but bad southern a ninja? accent. Yeah. Like, I don't know why it's... he's going KFC, like, full KFC, <laughs> but he's <laughs> definitely doing that. Detective Fowler, it's an honor to meet you, Mr. Cage. Uh uh uh. Rule number one unless you're a lawyer or a process server, you call me Hamilton. <laughs> Whatever you say, Kentucky Fried. Uh, he's also the owner of a dog racing um, organization, mm-hmm. I guess, or, or track. But the weird thing is the dog racing track is actually just a baseball diamond because they couldn't get a real dog track. That looked yeah. super weird to me. But we're, we're introduced to Man Bun uh, and his mm-hmm. baseball dog track, and we're also introduced to his son, Elton John, uh, from Kill Bill. <laughs> Yeah, Kill Bill came out right before this, and I feel like they really did try and make him look like Bill. Oh, they Bill. tried like, real they hard. They really tried. John Voight, by the way, in every scene, has really flushed cheeks and a red oh, nose. He's, he's not entirely super red-faced. Why. Yeah, every time. I, don't know. I, well, I mean, I don't know what he's, does that. He's also but... carrying around a glass of very obviously whiskey. The whole yeah, film, in every scene, in every yeah. scene, like like there's there's a there's a guy, a handler, like they have a handler for him on set because he keeps randomly <laughs> drunkenly wandering into things on the set and knocking over the green screen. So they had a guy yep. there, like get him his whiskey. And yes, he's like, he like runs up. Yeah. Yes, real quick, I got it, I got him. <laughs> yeah, later on they have like a scene of him exercising, like doing yeah. karate stuff. And they pass him a squirt bottle, and it's full of, like, it's a brown liquid. Like, it's it. full of whiskey. Like, it's obviously, it is obviously alcohol. And it's like, what? And he just starts, just takes this huge swig off of it, and then just walks away. And that's the scene, and you're like, oh, he's fucking smashed. Like, he's so done through <laughs> this whole movie. And I mean, yeah, he did it right. And has him like that. Like, it's amazing. Like, he must have demanded a paycheck and whiskey on set at all times. And yes, they yeah. were just so scared of him leaving the film. They're just like, oh, he's at, he's on set drunk again. Just let him go. <laughs> he was the best part of this movie by a lot, in um, my mind. This movie's directed by the same guy who did uh, Christmas Story and Porky's, by the way. Yep. So, and do you see Baby any of that? Geniuses. Yeah, and Baby Geniuses. <laughs> and, Baby Ge- and wonderful hit, Baby Geniuses. I, I found out later that Baby Geniuses 2 actually references... Karate dog. Oh. Uh, oh, great! The yeah. baby geniuses karate dog. So, universe. so, so the karate dog is definitely in the baby geniuses universe, which is hilarious to me. Oh, is that Anyways, a, isn't that a good feel? Bill. Hold on, no, we yeah, need to go back. That's... That is a good oh. feel. You need to feel good about that universe. That is better than the Schneider verse. <laughs> There's so many universes that I just can't wait for them to go back in two and twenty years and unlock and like 
we can have like a scene of John Voight coming in like in the yeah. CGI and being like, I'm back, and he's the new villain. Yeah, they'll, they'll, but like, he still has red cheeks and a nose, and he's still carrying whiskey. <laughs> So we have knockoff Kill Bill, and he's just, he's giving the herbs to the dogs, yeah. and making them run faster, and um, he's like basically juicing the dogs so that he can win races and like fix them. Kind of, uh, they have a scene where Chevy Chase is like improving, and I'm going to use improving in the loosest uh. possible terms many many times throughout this. Uh, hitting on another dog kind of thing. Like, it's like him and some other actress, like, ad-libbing lines yeah, at each other. Did, did Chevy Chase fuck a dog in this movie? I don't... <laughs> I'm... Yeah, he definitely does. Uh. Chevy Chase well, definitely oh, does hold a on. racism, hold though. Hold on. Because Chevy Chase... I need to go back. Chevy Chase... I need to be clear for legal reasons. Chevy Chase did not fuck a dog. Featuring <laughs> the voice of Chevy Chase fucked a dog. <laughs> <laughs> the vo- Chevy Chase's voice... The voice absolutely yeah. sensuously 100%. went all over that dog. Chevy, Chevy Chase, Chase, Chase did not. Did yeah, not. we need to be clear about that. Do not sue us, Chevy Chase. Thank you. Now, Can we be very open about the fact that Chevy Chase is very, very racist in this film? Oh, he's though? extremely racist against cats. Oh, man. Like, so they have this whole thing right after this. Like, the, the they meet Kill Bill, and yeah. Kill Bill is talking all about, like, how he's juicing up these dogs and... And then he sees a cat, and he starts going on about, like, cats are responsible for the plague in Europe. Just and like, then he actually has a line where he says, well, and I'm pretty sure that I have my suspicions about World War II as well. Like, was, so, like, was, that, a, this, was that a Japanese thing? I don't... What, I, like, where was this, he going? I don't know. I mean, like, this is the level of improv... That Chevy Chase is doing, like, because that's an improv line. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what it is. And it's like, he goes to, like, the dog is supposed to not like cats, so he immediately jumps into, like, cats committed genocide in I, World War II I in guess? this kid's film. And I just want to give you, I'm not going to spoil it for later, that's only the second most offensive thing that this dog does in yeah. the film for a comedy Well, well joke. thankfully, the dog is going to help our good friend Adam Sandler knock off, get the girl he likes by being his wingman, and talking in his ear while they're at a restaurant, and telling him to say racist cat things. There's another female officer that they kind of vaguely introduced right at the weed emporium scene, and uh, the dog goes... And starts talking for our main character and goes, Hey, do you want to go on a date to such and such a restaurant at such and such a time? And it's like, Chili's. It's something like, I can't remember where it was. It was somewhere uh, Amazon really Cafe. Yes, it was the Amazon yeah, Cafe. Yeah, because that's, what it that's like. a it Rainforest, Rainforest Cafe Rainforest. joke, I guess. Yeah. So it's like he's taking her to like the cheesiest, worst restaurant possible. And she's like, yeah, all right, I guess. And Yeah, she didn't really seem that up to it, to be honest. So they have the the romantic comedy scene here where suddenly the dog's doing the talking for him through an earpiece. And of course, our main character, despite being a super genius who made like the most advanced AI in the world and has this massive mansion and is also a police officer, um, can't help but say every single thing that this dog says in his ear, including such wonderful lines as, Check out the chassis on that lassie. Uh, which is an actual line in the movie. And then there's more cat racism for a little while, because a cat comes by and he starts yelling about how much he hates cats to his date. Let's get away from the cat racism. Do you think Chevy there's Chase... A lot of cat... Listen, do, there's do, a lot of cat racism do, to get away from, I am though. not a cat racist apologist. So, the... <laughs> Che- I, can, did, did, I can excuse the cat racism, did, but... Did, did Chevy Chase write the line, look at the chassis on that lassie, or was that given to him? I am pretty sure that was given, because it's that way smarter than anything he's ever read before that. Uh, yeah, any of the other improv, yeah. quote-unquote, lines are all the stuff that I already read. Like, the you call this mm. surfing, which was just but so random and let, garbage. Let's keep moving ahead, though. So, yes. after... After all this stupid romance crap, the guy gets the girl, kinda. They go back home, and the dog's throwing a party for some reason that was never explained. Which is one of the better parts of the movie, because it has cute dogs. 
in the dog it is movie? not even, it's not the better part of the movie it's the best part of the movie that's like the yeah. best two minutes of the film because they've got like dogs sitting around playing poker that's actually kind of yeah. cute dj dog yeah, yeah wishbone yeah. is dropping some fat wishbone beats. dropping like, wish- some fucking knowledge on them hell yeah it's so good it's so good and then he kicks all the dogs out. Boop, 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 the what's dog the story, like... Wishbone? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he kicks them all out because they're throwing a party and the girl couldn't come in, I guess. Yeah, so he couldn't take his date inside. I guess. There's, like, no explanation because it has the dog going on a date at the same time he's going yeah. on a date. Kind After they... So they talk to each other, he talks in his ear for a little while, and then the dog leaves to go on a date with another dog, and then it shows them both on their own dates kind of thing, and then he goes back to the house, and suddenly there's a party in the house, and that female dog's nowhere to be seen. Yeah. And they just kind of move on from that, it just doesn't matter. And he's like, no, I wasn't having a party, it was so that I could get intel, and then they talk to the AI, and the, like, so the super advanced computer has a voice, Yes. because he just talks back and forth to it, and it... This is the first time when I noticed that it called him Sweetie Buns? Yeah. Like it, it called the main character Sweetie Buns. Yeah, it, it definitely wants to bang him. <laughs> yeah, like, the AI just wants to bang him randomly. There's no explanation yeah. for that. It's just out of nowhere, this AI is like, oh, well, they're located at, like, 343. Sweetie Buns. Oh, and you're like, what? Yeah. What's going on? Why is this suddenly, Three... like, a sexy AI? You know, at, at 343 Guilty Spark. Halo. I yeah, play video games. Uh. <laughs> uh, I, I don't actually know what happened after this point, because all I wrote down was cheesy 90s hacking while tapping at a keyboard and then cop shit. And I don't know if we really knew, need to explain more than that. There's a lot of cop shit. This is it's a lot more cop, cop dog. Yeah, this is a lot more cop dog than cop dog was. This one is... We've really mixed up our movies, because yeah. Cop Dog was all about Ghost Dog, and now Karate Dog is all about Cop Dog. We need to find I, a movie about a Ghost Dog that's about a karate. Find, <laughs> that's about karate dog. Just make the loop. Uh, we, need, you know, we need to close this circuit. Yeah. They find out the lab that Mr. Miyagi was breaking into, so they break into it themselves, and he's lowering the dog down Mission Impossible style in, like, a really, really obvious knockoff of it. Mm-hmm. And they have, like similar music where it's like kind of tone shifted well, kind well, of thing. Well, it's music they could have used without spending money. Yeah, but it's made to sound like yeah. Mission Impossible music, but it's like a half beat off so they're not actually using the music and then they don't have to pay for it kind of thing. Um, and then he goes and he starts hacking the computer yeah. as the dog. The best part of this scene though is there's one thing that we have to talk about. The, the CD? dog swings over yeah. and goes to, like, put in a card, like, CD thing to, like, rip the files. And they have this really obvious puppet hand come up for the dog hand. And the person that's doing it, for some reason, can't see the slot and misses it, like, four times. Yeah. He's like, jam- he's, like, blindly jamming at the wall trying to get it in and finally gets it in and they just like keep the whole thing I, in they're like i can't believe one they take that whatever scene. it's fine who I, cares i mean for all the scenes they had everybody <laughs> drunk on set it makes sense i guess they would keep something like this but it oh really does it's that, that's so the great. only scene you need to see in mission impossible shit everything else is just explaining that the t-virus makes dogs strong or something and also man bun kill bill might be insane that's all that yeah. happens yeah yeah, we have some weird scenes of, like, man-dog, man-bun-dog. Oh, I call him dog-man-bun. I forgot he's also he's... wearing a Jedi Master robe, and the T-Virus makes him younger? Something? Yeah, he starts running on the track with the dogs. That's why I'm saying, like, he's dog-man-bun. Oh, that does he's... happen. Yeah, he gets oh, into the cages fuck. with the dogs and just runs with them, because, I don't know. I blinked that out because it was so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's really dumb. Oh and they, they talk about, like... The kids are like, I don't know, dad's been really weird, like Elton John and uh, his... Uh, like Elton John sis- and Blonde Girl, who doesn't say anything? Blonde Girl, who has no lines in the movie, yeah. and I thought was his wife for the longest time, until I eventually realized that she was but supposed to be But he's 80 years kid. old. Yeah. Maybe... Uh, it was you, weird. Yeah, I don't... So, anyways, and then, like, they, he's like, oh, look, this is me, like, five years ago, and look at how old I am. And they show, like, a regular picture of John Wayne. Yeah, it's, just, so like, it's, just, so it's just a selfie he took before the... It's just the a shoot. selfie he took. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they just, like, take him out of makeup, and yeah. they're like, ooh, that's hideous, let's put that up there. <laughs> and so then they use that, and then he's like, look at me now. 
And the kids are like, wow, yeah, you have been getting younger. And it's like, wait, did the kids not notice that dad's like 10 years younger than he should be kind of thing? I mean, to be fair, Elton John's been on tour recently, so... (laughs) Yeah, so he's talking about getting younger and he's got like this... That's his real plan with this whole vial of whatever T-virus thing that he has. Yeah. And then um, it has him drunk in his office, like wandering around... I, I don't think he was acting in that scene. I think he was no, just he's legitimately no, he's drunk. Like, he was, yeah, like, stumbling he's... around and knocking shit over on accident. And he's very clearly like, oh, shit, was I supposed to do that? <laughs> that keeps yeah, going. And he's, like, kind of dancing around yeah. a little bit. Like, he's doing a little bit of a jig. Yeah. And then he, like, goes and gets, like, some of the virus stuff that he just randomly has in his oh, he fridge. he pours it in his whiskey. Pours it in his whiskey. And his whiskey doesn't change colors because he doesn't actually pour any of it in there. Yeah. They don't really show it being poured in. And then he walks out with his whiskey drunkenly. So the guy takes the CD that he's got of ripped files or whatever. Adam Sandler knockoff, stuff. yeah. And our super genius who's programmed the most advanced AI in the universe has not checked this CD at all for what it has on it. He just trusted the dog would know what to download and it would be fine. So he goes to the cops and he's like, oh, like this is... Stuff that shows all the things that I've been saying. And they put it into the computer, and it goes, this computer will self-destruct in three seconds. And then it, like, fries the computer. Hold hold on. It doesn't just fry the computers. Let's go back a little bit. So, sure. we do have the Dancing Ninja video, which is very yeah. reminiscent of Jurassic Park with the, uh-uh, you didn't say the yes. magic word scene. This is that scene. But yeah. instead of just frying the computer, the computers explode into sparks... All of them. Just the monitor, yes. though. And just the monitor. The computer's yeah. fine. Just the monitor. And then it takes the power out completely in the police center somehow. From Yeah, everything just... It fries... It's like video? an EMP grenade. It just, like, I, fries all electronics in, like, a 500-foot radius. I'm still confused how no a reason. CD does this. It's not even a CD. It's a digital file on the CD. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, it... It makes... I mean, we're not looking at this making any sense. This movie is much, much worse than Cop Dog. Can we just put that right now? Hold on. Are you saying you would rather watch Cop Dog than Karate Dog? Yes. Yes, definitely. All right, well, yeah, as long as we're clear. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Like, 100%. I'd absolutely want to do that. All right, well, let's Um, end this this podcast. Let's go back and watch Cop Dog. I would! So the thing is that this... Well, this movie, the thing is that there are bad movies. Like, Cop Dog is interesting because of all of the things that they do wrong because they don't know how to make movies. Mm. Like, the the field of view is really weird. Like, there's odd close-ups and, like, weird shaky cam and all kinds of things like that. From a filmmaker perspective, it's interesting to see how uniquely they fail. Yeah, yeah, like there's all I kinds agree. of interesting, weird things going on. There's nothing weird or interesting going on in this movie. What this movie is, is it's a bunch of competent people that know how to do a movie and are actually decent actors, all being lazy as possible to take a paycheck. Like, that's what this movie is. This movie is the laziest film. Like, it's just a bunch of people that know what they could do, but just don't give a shit. Yeah. And so it's all of them, like, being drunk and not caring and, like, very lazily doing things and, like, taking a shot and having, like, the pup- dog puppet hand try and jam something in. And they're like, I mean, is that Close shot enough. good? They're like, yeah. eh, whatever, good enough. Like, this is only going to be a TV movie. It's that kind of movie. And, yeah, so that's what it is. And we weirdly, so we get the CD that blows up computers and then we get the really, really bad scene. I'm, I almost want to put a content warning on this, even though we're only talking I, about it. There's the dead dog scene. It's why is this a thing in every dog movie we watch? Every dog movie we watch has a horrible do- dead dog scene this, right now. So, okay, before the dog scene, the Adam Sandler knockoff, his girl, because women are background characters in movies, apparently. And yes. JoJo break into Kill Bill's uh, dog racing mansion? Question mark slash It's lab? also his home and also his lab. Yeah, some, it's everything. Some location that's on a a lot that they could film at. I was gonna say this is we have one set and yeah. we're gonna use it. Yeah, 
Yeah. So they break in, and JoJo goes into the kennel where the greyhounds are that are used for the dog racing, and one of them is, like, really vividly, like, skeletal and malnourished and lying down, and it looks it looks real. I think they really got a dog to, yeah. s- to lie down that was very sick, and it is it, not okay. No, it, it was hard to watch. Yeah. Like, that scene actually... Uh, like, whoa, this is good comedy podcasting here. No. But, like, this this scene is, it's hard to watch because for a little while I thought they got a taxidermy dog. Yeah, I thought it was fake. Yeah. It looks too thought, real, though. Well, well that's or, what or I like said. Or, like, a dead taxidermy. dog or something. It yeah, looked like they got a taxidermy that's true. dog. Like it, lo- it looked like it was a dead dog, but not yeah. fake. And it was it was weird. But then they have it kind of move and talk a little bit, and it's like... Well, that's animated, I'm, though. They yeah. they did that in post. It could still well, be a taxidermy talk. Uh, Which makes not. it even more morbid, not. to be honest. I hope not. But it basically is like, oh, the drugs did this to me. Don't do drugs, kids. They're real bad. Like, Look at John Voight. So, and, yeah. like, like, if this was an animated film, it would be like, all dogs go to he- heaven... The dog's lying down, doing the emotional speech, lifting its arms. This is just like a very weird, very still dog. Something's yeah, not it's right. It's really still. It, it doesn't look right. It's I don't know what creepy. they were doing. It, it's really bad, but we get more into what are they doing in a minute. Yeah. Because, so, they get caught in the compound as uh, they're trying to leave, and he'd like talk to this dog that. Like, mm-hmm. Chevy Chase's dog talks to this dog, and they go, oh, it's the drugs. The drugs are doing this to me. They have bad side yeah. effects, and eventually you, you uh, re-age they, they and get They exposition us with a, yeah, they exposition with a taxidermy dog. Great. Yeah. And then they, you know, go ahead, and they try and leave. She gets captured, and then they get the cops called on them, which makes it make no sense that she was captured because then why wouldn't they just call the cops on all of them and say they were all breaking in? Yeah, but I don't know how whatever. that works. Whatever, it doesn't make sense. None of this movie makes sense. It's just lazy. And he go, they get a scene where the dog catcher shows up to catch the Chevy Chase dog and they do like, dead dog walking and put him into the dog jail. Yeah. Where he does some more cat racism at the cat across the cell from him. And I thought that they were going to have, like, oh, a jailbreak scene where he had to get along with the cat. Oh, no. Cat... No, he just really hates cats. Yeah, <laughs> they the just do, like, racism back possible. and forth at each other. And then the guy, Adam no, Sandler, comes in yeah. with a big, big fake dog. Like, it's like this six-foot-tall dog that's, like, super CGI'd in. And it's the Scud. It's Scud It, from it is Toy Scud Story. from Toy Story. And it's even the same... I think it is the same model, which is awful, because that model is from, like, 90, what, 6 or 7? I forget when Toy Story came out. Yeah, it's But it's it old. looks awful. <laughs> and it's, it like, looks terrible. It is yeah, definitely it's that dog. fake dog. Yeah, so it's this giant fake dog, and he go- they have no explanation as to where they, he got it from. They he just, like, beat walks up- in, and he goes... Come meet my dog. Now I'm letting all yeah, these dogs free. That worked. But anyway, they beat up the dog catcher, release all the dogs in the pound, which were definitely not going to be killed. And then, finally, finally we get some kung fu and karate dog again. Well, not right? before the pedophilia, though. Oh, I did not write that down. Yeah, I did. I uh, wrote it down. Okay. I, I said that, listen, yeah. I told people early on that the cat racism World War II stuff was yeah. only the second worst that Chevy Chase ad lib joke. And this one's the worst because they have all the dogs break into like this conference that they're giving about yeah. how awesome their drug is. Well, John Voight drunkenly stumbles around on stage and looks really awkward because he's going crazy from the drug, I guess. Oh, and he, he also had a huge mark on his head from falling in yeah. the shower that morning. <laughs> For no reason, he has yeah. like, this massive bruise over half of his face. It's fucking weird. It's so weird. But all these dogs run in and crash the whole thing, and they're all yelling, Oh, God, dogs! And Well, some then, of the like, dogs were cute, though. Before we get into the really cute. awkward yeah. part, some of the dogs were adorable. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, no. It doesn't take apart from scene. ruining it completely, but some of the dogs were adorable. Yeah, no, the the scene is fine at first where they have all the dogs come in and all the dogs right. are adorable. There's, like, a dog jumping on a guy's back. Yeah, and that was like so the cute. The dog ever. was having so much fun. Yeah, and they have another one, like, That is the fun we face. could have had like, watching this movie. We could have had that. 
Yeah, they have these great little moments like that, and then they have like this big Saint Bernard like run up to a little Chihuahua and they start uh. like chasing each other, and it's like, oh, that's kind of cute. And then the Chevy Chase voiceover goes, like, she's underage. Watch out, I she's think? underage. Yeah, what and the I'm fuck? like, wait, what? And that's when I forced you to pause the movie. That was, like, yeah. the only time that we paused it. But I was like, you need to stop because I can't handle this. And I had to take a break. Because it's just... My note for that is pedophile dogs, really, and then five question marks. Right. Because I just... I needed that much to get out of my system. Well, it, that was the level of Chevy Chase's improv here. Uh, the movie... It's, the movie, thankfully, immediately pans away from it, doesn't say anything about it anymore, and completely mm-hmm. ignores it ever happened. And instead moves to, finally, some more CGI dog kung fu against Kill Bill. Yeah, an hour and, like, ten or something minutes after the first kung fu bit. Yeah. This is where you made me go back and cross out the accurate title Yeah, because it wasn't a about. fucking kung fu movie. It was 80 no. minutes of, like, cop shit and romance garbage. Yeah, the way this movie is constructed is that it's a really bad sandwich. The outside of the movie is oh, a wait. bad kung fu movie. It's an Adam Sandler witch. Oh, God. I got yeah. there. And, like, the inside of it is, like, a bad cop movie. Like, there's, like, 50 minutes of bad cop movie in the middle... And then there's also, like, ten minutes of bad romance movie on the outsides of that. So it's, like, all these little things sandwiched together to, like, make a single film that makes no sense. And it's just all of it's awful. So, yeah, yeah, we get them going to do Kung Fu and they get all set up and he's like, You're betraying our master! Because apparently the John Voight character is also trained by uh, Mr. Miyagi. Sure. And... Yeah, they do breakdance fighting at first. Well, it's not Very even literally. fighting. Okay, you were saying fighting. They are okay. not breakdance fighting. They are having a Fair dance-off, enough. my friend. Fair enough, they just do a dance-off. There yes. is no kung fu here at all. They just literally set up the kung fu fight and say, You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> we're gonna... <laughs> Fuck you, viewer. You don't <laughs> get a kung fu fight. You get some fucking breakdance. <laughs> and then they have yeah. an 80-year-old fucking... Man, do some yeah. shitty drunk breakdancing. <laughs> just John Voight trying to break dance. God like... damn it. And I don't think they used a stunt double for no. this either. No, he's like, just drunkenly dancing. Normally, for most of the scenes in like this, they used like bad CGI or like a stunt double to cover it. Like Pat Marina has one of the worst stunt, du- stunt doubles ever at the uh, beginning of it. Because he's ancient in this Oh, that's too. so bad. It's, yeah, like, it's a, like, definitely a wig. They normally use a stunt double, but then, like, for this breakdancing, they just have, like, John Voight, like, drunkenly falling on the ground. Uh, and they're like, that's breakdancing, there you go. And, yeah. Uh, but, but then he throws some ninja stars at the dog, and they do a Matrix joke. This came out pretty close to, I think, the first Matrix. And, yeah. to be fair, every movie was making a fucking Matrix joke. So, they I did can't jo- really... Yeah, they did a I, lot I of can't... pop culture references, though. Like, they did, like, the, well, the Mission Impossible one. References like, a Matrix stretch. One. They mentioned things in pop culture. Sure. But they, they kind of keep doing those kinds of scenes yeah. where they're, like, doing the really lazy, like, we can't think of a scene for this, so let's just take yeah. it from another movie. It's that kind of thing. It's anyway. Like another extension of the laziness of the filmmaking on display here. I totally agree. Uh, breakdancing, Matrix shit... Uh, both of them jump off a wall or a bar and turn into Raiden for a second, jumping towards each other, like, directly in air. The dog, yeah. like, kisses him a lot by licking his face because dog slobber's funny, I guess. Yeah, it does its ultimate technique, the but, kiss. And but thankfully, after beating Kill Bill by electrocuting him with a sign, which they didn't technically actually do anything. I don't even know if the dog won the fight, technically. The 80-year-old drunken man technically electrocuted himself. Yeah, he stands up and goes to steady himself by grabbing the cord on the sign, and the cord just snaps in half and electrocutes him. Like, it's like, wait, what? And that's the end of the fight. Like, that's that's how they win, is that he stands up and drunkenly, drunkenly electrocutes himself. And then an extremely confused Elton John... (laughs) <laughs> walks up the stairs, pulls out a gun, and shoots at Adam Sandler, which the dog takes the bullet for. But the dog's not dead, unlike Cop Dog, which immediately makes this a better cop movie. <laughs> makes it way better as a movie for that part of it, yeah. And then he gets a, a medal, 
And then we have an extremely uncomfortable, really weird CGI musical number, and thankfully the movie ends. Yeah, we have a weird CGI scene of all the dogs playing instruments, and then a cat that happens to be there. But the Which, cat's he's still racist CGI'd. against cats, and it's a real cat. Yeah, the cat's not, so all the dogs are CGI'd or, like, puppeted in some way. Yeah. And then the cat isn't, but they have it on this really obvious loop. Like, where it's, like, against the green screen, and it's just, like, doing the same two things over and over and over, just green screened, and then the movie ends. Well, they did get, they get a drunk Chevy Chase to sing a song, so I guess, I guess that's fair that they use the entire song and make me miserable. This movie, like I said, by this point in the movie, I, it was, like, a low hum in the background of my brain. <laughs> like, I just, it was so forgettable, it's hard to explain how forgettable this movie is like if i didn't have notes i wouldn't remember that i'd even watched this movie so okay more importantly we have three dogs we need to rate in this film there's technically more dogs but most of them there's are a CGI. lot of dogs in the film so yeah. first dog is chocho there is a real dog at some points in this movie for chocho although most of it is yeah, cgi garbage so we we are them. we are rating the real dog that is shown in this film how do you feel about okay, that? The actual dog Chocho that was not an actor dog, but just a mutt they found on the street, which is why they had yep. to CGI every second. Because that dog it. did not act. <laughs> that dog did not do any no. tricks. That dog did nothing. Um, I'm going to give that dog like uh, an 11 out of 10 because it refused to act in this film, and I appreciate that. Uh, I'd have to give him a 10 out of 10. Because it, half of the movie, the dog's not even in, and the other half, he's just looking at a trainer. Dog could use a little bit more skill, but I appreciate the effort, and I think he's doing his best. Well, uh, I, see, I appreciate that he didn't do his best and yeah. just didn't want to be in the movie, because <laughs> this movie didn't deserve him. <laughs> uh, next dog, DJ Dog. DJ oh, Dog okay. is adorable. That's like a 12 DJ out Dog of is 5 out of 7. Uh, best borking dog we've ever seen. 5 out of like, 7? Which... Whoa, hold on. That's a low score, my friend. It's a perfect score. It's the perfect score. 5 out of 7. So <laughs> the the dog is wishbone dropping fat beats, yeah. and there's nothing that could be better than that. All right, and the last score we need to give for the dog in the movie, Chevy Chase. Oh. I give him a zero. I mean, he's a dog. I'll give him that. Like, <laughs> He's awful. He's a dog. He's a miserable, like, racist, sexist, like... He... His character in this film is awful. It's terrible. He's just so mean. Like, he's very, very racist to all the cats and stuff in a way yeah. that's, like... Even though it's cats, it's uncomfortable watching it. And, like, he's... The chassis on that lassie and pedophile jokes, it's abrasive and horrible um negative 10 out of a million i don't know fuck right. chevy chase <laughs> like oh uh, you'd be barking up the wrong tree to get a rating for me on chevy chase that's it folks <laughs> also i would like to say if you like this podcast that we do we are now on itunes we're now on stitcher and spotify and everywhere else you can find podcasts uh follow us give us a review the review can be bork, bork, bork. I don't care. Do whatever you want. There's cop dogs, but we're not cop dogs. So you can I ain't a cop. what you want for that. <laughs> Look at the chassis on that lassie. What? <laughs> <laughs>